Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still the first day of April, and it's 4.50 p.m. Okay, this one is uh, uh, um, the letter from Dawn from yesterday that I got at 6.33 in the morning. And the one I got today, I may share tomorrow. Okay. Uh, everybody on the team had got something for this one. All right, uh, let me get started. Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. You will have opportunities to reevaluate areas of your life that need adjusting. The temptation will come to throw everything out there the window and just start over but that may not be the best course of action not everything needs change so you must not overreact and do more than is required I will give you the wisdom you need to do the right thing now of course as I've said before a lot of these are meant for just certain people who need to hear this. Maybe everything in your walk with the Lord is going fine and you don't have to reevaluate anything. But for some people, they probably needed to hear this. They probably need to try to figure out how come this over here is going so bad all the time. Or maybe it's constant arguing with the people at work. Your husband, your wife, uh, who, who knows? So you reevaluate. How am I treating them? What am I doing right? Am I pleasing the Lord in how I respond? Whatever it is. All right. The verse put with it is Proverbs 3, 6. I'm going to go ahead and add 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. You know these words are not just nice sayings. They're the word of God. And if you take them to heart. And you do what it says. Acknowledge him. Make him your God, your only God. He shall direct your paths. Okay. Um, these are all dated. Well, let's see. This one's dated March 30th. Some's the 31st. So whatever. It's 30th or 31st. So I won't have to go over the dates. If it is not one thing, it's another. You used to think when you got over a trying event. It was all downhill from then on. Have you ever said that? If it's not one thing, it's another. I have. In reality, it has not been that way at all. In other words, you used to think when you got over a trying event it was all downhill from then on. In reality, it has not been that way at all. No, not for God's kids. We just keep getting uh, attacked. Things keep going wrong. Things keep breaking. Lose another friend over testifying to them. One thing after another. It's part of our life. All right, let me continue. Yes, there have been some respites or breaks, you know, some periods of time where everything was cool. But that, but hard events have happened. And then another right afterwards. Do not entertain disappointment or you will soon be depressed. Keep in mind 
all is good and you are wonderfully blessed. This is the truth. Now, the scripture put with this is Jeremiah 29.11 in the Amplified Version. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. Okay, well, I always learned it as thoughts for good and not for evil, plans for hope and an expected end. Welfare does not mean God plans for us to end up on welfare. <laughs> the meaning of that is uh, wealth, like if someone said, oh, I'm just concerned about your welfare, you know, meaning they want to see you living a good life, right? They want to see you succeed and be happy, get the things you need. Well, God is the same way. He, he doesn't sit up there trying to help us all get rich. In fact, many of us, it's not meant. To, to, we have to rely on him for every month to month, you know, or week to week for some people. Okay, that's why you have to trust in him. The next one, let's move on. Let's see, that doesn't say who got that. There's no name with it. Okay, March 31st. I know you have your mind set on something good happening. It will. There will be a change in plans. It will come as a surprise, but it will be okay. Do not let yourself get upset by the change. You will see later it is best that it happens. Go with the flow of what I am doing. Staying flexible is a good way to live. You will be able to follow me wherever I go. First thought that came to me was someone's trying to buy an RV to do street preaching all over the state, all over the country, and the loan falls through, or someone bought it before you could, and Jesus is telling them uh, there will be a change in plans. It will come as a surprise because you really thought you, you were going to get it. But it will be okay. So I'm just using that as an example of how this could be for some people. Do not let yourself get upset by the change. No, when you pray, you should always pray, if it be your will, Father, let us get the loan. Or let us get that thing. Or let us move out away from these people that are so mean to us. Or whatever it is. Alright. You will see later it is the best. It is best that it happens. Go with the flow of what I am doing. Staying flexible is a good way to live. You will be able to follow me wherever I go. That's the truth. Wherever we are, he is there. You follow him by living by his example. Okay? Matthew 16, 24 from the NAS, New American Standard, says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And this message, this little word was given to Bev Robinson. All right, the next one is dated the 30th. How current is your testimony of my goodness in your life? 
I completely understand how you could camp out at the place where a wonderful display of my sovereign lordship was on display some time ago. It is easy to settle in on the marvelous manifested presence of what once was. I encourage you to declare up-to-date evidence of what I am accomplishing in your life in the here and now. Keep your testimony fresh and new. If you're always seeking ways to serve him, uh, share, the, share the gospel, uh, help others, you're going to always find a new testimony. Okay, and the scripture put with it is 1 Peter 3, 15 in the Passion Translation. But give reverent honor in your hearts to the anointed one and treat him as the holy master of your lives and if anyone asks about the hope living within you always be ready to explain your belief with gentleness and respect praise be to our living lord jesus christ all right, this one's dated the 31st. I choose you, just like I formed Adam from dust and then Eve from the side of Adam to walk beside him. I chose you before the foundation of the earth, just like I molded you in your mother's womb. I fashioned you to be unique. You are one of a kind. As you look at your hands today, understand that no one else has fingerprints precisely like yours. Like you, says. Cherish the fact that you are wonderfully made. Now, I want to make a statement here. This is where that one, what some denomination, Calvinism, I think, believes everyone is chosen by God from the foundation of the earth. They've already been chosen, I guess, once you accept it, okay, then it's, it's like taking once saved, always saved to a whole new level. You can live however you want. You were chosen. You understand? Okay, that was weird. I don't have that ringtone set. That note. I don't know what it means. I'll check it in a minute. Okay, what it means is Jesus knew and Father knew before time began, before the earth was created, that in, uh, say, my birthday, July 14th, 1955, around, I think, 4-something p.m., the Lord knew that I was going to be born and that I was going to go through the things I went through and then sin the way I sinned, but he knew I was going to ultimately always follow him, always be repentant eventually, and get around to getting it right with my heart fully for him. He knew it. He knew that before I was formed in my mother's womb. So... I honestly believe there could have been a better word for that, whatever original word it was in Hebrew or Greek for predestined. He, he already had it planned out. He already knew who his bride was going to be. He knew ahead of time who was going to love him most. 
who was going to follow him most. That's what it means. Not that he said, I'm going to pick so-and-so because I like that name or whatever. I mean, I any reason would be just as silly, don't you think? There'd have to be a reason. So anyway, I'll move on. You are one of a kind. Look at your hands and understand no one else has fingerprints precisely like you. Cherish the fact that you are wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 13 through 14 in the Passion Translation says, You formed my innermost being. You okay, little guy? You okay? You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. And that was given to Kevin Robinson. Boy, this is long. Every single person put in something today in this one. This one was for March 30th. I know that sometimes when trouble or pain occur in your life, it is difficult to remain diligent to my spirit in all things. Boy, howdy, that's the truth, isn't it? Who can say amen to that? I'll continue. Do you not understand that as my son approached the day of his crucifixion, in order to complete his purpose on earth, he had to submit his mind to my spirit? It is the same for you, child. When the temptation is to take your eyes off of me, remain in my spirit. Amen. Call upon the Lord to give you more Holy Spirit. And he will, even if you've already been filled and you pray in tongues and everything. He will give you even more to overflowing. And Romans 8, 5 in the NASB says, for those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And that was given to Jonas Bolin. Last one. March 31st. You have been known to have tunnel vision. You have even tooted your own horn about only being able to do one thing at a time. I tell you this, you must expand your thinking because my kingdom is about expansion. Doing the same thing over and over again will get you the same result. I desire to explode your thinking. So much is happening in heaven. So much diverse activity. Step up the pace. Expand and increase your thoughts. Hmm. That one's very interesting. You might want to take that to the Lord and ask him, How can I do this, Lord? I seem to have tunnel vision. If you do, this is evidently for people who say this. I can only do one thing at a time. And the Lord wants you to open up your ability to maybe multitask for him. Some people do have trouble with that. but And it's not always necessary to multitask. But sometimes when you're working for him, it is. It just depends on what you're doing. 
It depends on your call, the call of God on your life, okay? The verse given with it is 1 Kings 4.29 in the NAS. I'm pretty sure that means New American Standard. They just don't put the B. Now God gave Solomon wisdom and very great discernment and breadth, breadth of mind like the sand that is on the seashore that was given to Robin Robinson Bolin. And that is the end of this letter from Dawn. And I'm about to go on with uh, Grafted in Team Jesus, so I'll probably do the other one tomorrow, and I will get to your comments in the morning. All right, with that I say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. And I pray that it is understood as it was meant to be. But don't fear asking questions if you don't understand one of them or you think, I'm, I'm not so sure that came from the Lord because blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's what we do in the team. We'll take prophecies and break them down and say, is this really from the Lord? And we'll look stuff up in scriptures. And then Kathy makes a video. So when you go to their channel on Brighteon, you know most of those, like Edward Umlings, we break his down. Some of the other ones that are shorter, and Kathy will tell you, I didn't have time to listen to this one. I'm just telling you about it. So we haven't broken that one down. Okay, I'm just telling you. If you ever want to check them out. It's grafted in Team Jesus on, let's see, is it 222 on that? No, it's just grafted in Team Jesus on Brideon.com. Okay, so um, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us, our devices, and our internet connections. And with that, I will say bye for now. You all have a blessed night or blessed morning. Whatever time it is when you're watching this. Okay, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.